Professor Mohammad Aslam, the Vice Chancellor of this university, Professor Tapi Reddy, the Chairman of uh, State Council, Telangana, Professor Ramachandram, the Vice Chancellor of Usmania University, Professor V. B. Ramana, Vice Chairman of uh, State Council, Telangana, Professor Rajendran, my friend, the Vice Chancellor of Alagappa University, which is only university in Tamil Nadu which has A plus plus grade. And uh, Professor Kavita Dariani, the Vice Chancellor of uh, Jawaharlal Nehru University, Architecture and Fine Arts. And Professor Madhukar, the former advisor NAC. The distinguished uh, invited speakers from various institutions, principals of the various colleges, faculty members, and my colleagues from Manon Maniam uh, Sundarnar University, Thirunel Veli, Kanyakumari, and Tutikurin District and the invitees, press, media, good morning to all of you. And uh, indeed a great opportunities in the southern part to have a workshop on autonomous to colleges benefits and way forward. And I congratulate uh, Dr. Srinivas and also we thank Professor Gopal Reddy, the commission member of University Grants Commission for having taken this wonderful initiative. And uh, as uh, Professor Ramachandram at the end of his statement he said, you want to see there is no affiliated colleges to any university and there should be always autonomous. I think that is the way we have to go forward because when you look at uh, United States, Japan and Europe and most of the advanced countries and you don't see this affiliation kind of business. And uh, they're all autonomous colleges and mostly large number of universities and a higher number of enrollments. And uh, you know, and I am uh, very stunned to know that Usmania University has more than 700 affiliated colleges. And, uh, and I am very happy to note that uh, from the chairman of uh, state council, they are going to bifur bifurcate as east, west, north, and uh, so on. And I think that's a very good initiative because it's very difficult to remember the 700 colleges. And uh, being a regulatory authority, it is also difficult to control these colleges. I could very well see, because in Manon Maniam Sundarnar University, in three districts of uh, Kanyakumari, Tirnalveli, and Tutukarin, we have only 79 affiliated colleges and 10 constant colleges, over 1,20,000 students are enrolled in the regular mode. And, uh, you know, being a regulatory uh, institution, it is very, very important that we should enforce the minimum standard prescribed by the University Grants Commission. Because the University Grants Commission, time to time, recently, have put a minimum standards, because which is very, very important to bring the higher education institutions of uh, national importance and global importance. And in Tamil Nadu, we are very happy. I am also very happy to note that 194 autonomous colleges in Tamil Nadu. Maybe that could be the reason, I don't know, why we have two vice chancellors today, other than this uh, uh, Telangana state. And, uh, you know, we are very generous to grant. But when you look into the infrastructure requirement to become an autonomous colleges, and uh, it is many of the colleges are really in pathetic conditions. Because as a regulatory board uh, of the, the university, in the, in the recent past, because of various reasons of uh, political influences in the administration, and you would like to uh, give permission to these colleges to start the programs. Because when you go for the inspection and you see that the infrastructures are poorly placed, the faculty members are not adequately qualified, and uh, the university sometimes because of the interference we are forced to grant permission to start the to start the courses and as a surprise and uh, after i took as a vice chancellor in manon Manim sundarnar university i made a point that every year every course should be every college should be inspected by the a commission constituted by the university and to our surprise we see that nearly 70% of the programs, they do not have uh, even 50% of the qualified teachers. And uh, uh, there is again a surprise that, and there are courses, more than 75 courses, being run by the colleges and not even one qualified teacher. And we have to come up with a policy that if you do not have even one qualified teacher, you cannot run the program. And therefore, we have to suspend 75 programs. If you take into account 50% uh, of the qualified teachers you have to enforce, then you have to co close 70% of the colleges. 
We are not afford to close seventy percent of the colleges by on one day enforcing all these things. It has to take place in a phased manner, and so that we'll have a qualified. Because of this enforcement of qualifications of the teacher, and it is also everybody appreciated. The public is appreciated, colleges are appreciated, but managements are finding difficult because when you recruit a qualified staff, you had to pay at least minimum twenty thousand rupees. And they have been running uh, the institution by paying five and eight thousand rupees. I don't know. It is also very surprised to note that some of the colleges, the teachers pay money uh, to the institution because once they go for five years and six years, they get an experience certificate, which has a marks in the recruitment process of the Tamil Nadu state government when they do it. And you see, that is where we are. That is the ground reality. We have to accept it. And maybe to talk in this forum, sometimes it looks very hard. but that is the reality i think we have to come out of that and you know when we talk about the autonomous we need to have at least 85% of the uh, faculties are already filled but if you do not have not even a one qualified person if you run a college i think that is a disastrous and we are very happy that in tamil nadu the higher education enrollment ratio is 48.6 compared to the national average of 25 and maybe the 20 30 the government of india target is about 40% but still the tamil nadu government is much ahead and also of course in the national scenario the tamil nadu is doing very well in terms of nir of ranking in terms of nac accreditation score and so on and forth so forth but still even in tamil nadu we have large number of colleges under qualified poor infrastructure facilities i therefore to improve that as a university a regulatory we have to strictly enforce and the government should not interfere in the administration process of the universities then only we can improve the standard of education okay this is very very important i think wherever whichever be the state i think uh, slowly at least in the recent times we see that we don't have much influence from the tamil nadu government and uh, the universities are acting autonomous that is why i could enforce and i don't have any pressure from any government okay i think this is how the government should act because because our our pro -ch our chancellor uh, the present governor of the state is very particular that and he has told in front of uh, presence of the ministers that the government should tell the policy give the grant don't interfere in the administration of the government that is what is term is used to dictate in all forums i think that has made a momentum in tamil nadu uh, state universities and also the colleges and also when we talk about the autonomous colleges many colleges would not like to come forward because the students are looking for the brand of the university name in the certificate and sometimes particularly in engineering colleges i had many colleges have very excellent facilities but they don't want to come for autonomous because uh, they say the but because the autonomous grading examinations are different and though they have uh, employment opportunities other things when they compare with the like anna university degree certificate they feel that anna university degree certificate is much better than the autonomous colleges because the all the autonomous colleges are not having the same standard therefore the moment you say that autonomous colleges sometimes it happens that they may be coming up with the poor uh, uh, the uh, academic standards and also the other important problem sometimes we face in uh, education system is you know this uh, state councils also sometimes interfere too much in the academic curriculum content and most of the time i am very happy to see here the chairman and vice chairman are academic background but in many states the chairman will be the minister and vice chairman with the higher education secretary who is an undergraduate maybe an ias qualified okay and how can you expect the long years of experience of a professor who has seen many institutions because that is very very important and you see that you can't say that every college and every university should have 100% curriculum same if you say 100% curriculum same and where is the autonomy that is also a major problem and then there is a migration if one student come from this institution this institution they say that this is not equal and that is not equal and i think this is also not correct maybe if there is a regular programs like bsc physics mathematics history you see that at least 60% is common and 40% if the students are studying related to history related to physics what is the problem to say that this uh, program is equivalent to the program which he has studied in some other college i think this is what we have to take into account 
Because if we do that, then only student will also migrate from one university to another university, not only within the country, but also the outside the country. I think this is one of the important uh, the problems which normally <laughs> these uh, autonomous colleges are uh, facing. I think uh, the Government of India initiative to grant total autonomy to all the colleges is very welcome mood, I think, from all academicians. The challenge is we have to be very conscious and see that we should not just like that grant uh, autonomy. That is why I think in the new regulations also it is prescribed that they should have an A grade. Again, the A grade also a big challenge because to get an A grade for, an for a college is a big challenge because when you look at the various criteria in the uh, NAC accreditation process, and one of the criteria is like um, incubation activity and then the research and con consultancy, the revenue earned out of it, and then research project conduct conducted, and the H index of the faculty members. In a rural background, a college to get a A grade, as per the NAC accreditation with the various levels, points is also a very big challenge. I think uh, the government of India should also come up with some other benchmark to grant these kind of uh, grading to grant an autonomous. Because getting an A grade, because my university in 2000, it was a B grade institute. We recently we moved to A grade. When we go to the each criteria, it is big challenge in the university level itself for a university professor. Therefore, in a rural part where access itself is uh, difficult, to have these kind of uh, criteria are very difficult. Because unfortunately, we don't have any other benchmarking system. That's why the government of India, the University Grants Commission, tried to link with the NAC accreditation process. It's very good. But there is also a lot of challenge. I think as member uh, UGC is with us, I think uh, we'll also come up with some alternate uh, benchmarking system and uh, so that uh, the more number of institutions will qualify to get into this uh, autonomous status. And uh, I, I thank uh, Dr. Srinivas uh, for having invited me and uh, to share my thoughts uh, in this August gathering. And uh, I, I once again thank uh, every one of you for your uh, patient listening. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Bhaskar Garu, Honorable Vice Chancellor, MS University, Tirnal Valley, Tamil Nadu, for sharing your important uh, concerns. One is the quality of faculty and uh, insufficiency of the faculty also in most of the colleges. This is important challenge before they go for autonomy. The another important aspect you mentioned is it is indeed very important Unless the universities are fully autonomous, it may be difficult to promote the autonomous colleges. So this is also very important. Uh, many of your ideas, we are thankful to you, sir. I would request you to give a proposal to the UGC who will carry forward those things. Now I request uh, Professor Rajendran, Vice Chancellor, Algapa University, Karaikudi, Tamil Nadu, one of the very important universities. It is the A++ grade state university from Tamil Nadu, one of the leading universities of the country. I congratulate you, sir, for achieving this status. I request Professor Rajendran from, to share his ideas. Professor Gopal Reddy, Commission Member of UGC, New Delhi, and Honorable Vice Chancellors are present here. Dr. Madhuka, former advisor, NAC Bengaluru. Dr. Sinivas, and very distinguished academicians and administrators gathered here. The press, good morning to everybody. First of all, I would like to thank uh, Professor Gopal Reddy and Dr. Sinivas for sending me the letter. I almost missed this workshop for reasons of, uh, I could not say postal reasons, but I happened to see the letter just a day before, and immediately I contacted uh, Dr. Sinivas, and he said, sir, somehow you'll be here on the fourth morning. And I also tried my best, and I am here this morning. And as I entered the portals of this very beautiful campus, as uh, uh, the Vice Chancellor said, uh, it is very greenery, because Alagappa University being the number one university in terms of category one, achieving the status of category one. And at the same time, it also bagged a Swasta award. It has been categorized as fourth in the country among the government uh, institutions. But when I entered this campus, 
and immediately I took some pictures and sent to my uh, estate men's department saying how beautiful is this campus. <laughs> and you should always compare you with the peers, not with uh, other uh, uh, say institutions where they are maintaining a lesser standards. So the moment I immediately I had a talk with uh, the Vice Chancellor, the Vice Chancellor said, uh, Professor Rajendran, I'm a botanist. So natural interest in maintaining this campus. So that goes without saying. But anyway, that was a great, it's a wonderful campus being here. And also I would like to uh, say congratulate uh, Professor Gopal Reddy as well as uh, Dr. Sinivas taking up this issue of autonomy uh, for the colleges. Because uh, Professor Gopal Reddy said in his presentation that uh, the striking rate, for instance, when we got independence, there were 20 universities. Now there are nearly 941 universities. I may be corrected. Uh, both state, central, deemed private universities. And we had 500 uni colleges. Today we have 40,000 colleges and more. But among these 40,000 colleges, when we introduced the concept of autonomy, and uh, the very dismal figure of 672, and 672 colleges only have uh, autonomous status, thanks to the policies of, uh, I don't know, I want I, policies within inverted commas, because my uh, fellow vice chancellor from Tamil Nadu University has uh, made certain comments about these policies, policies of uh, our government, Tamil Nadu government, we have nearly 183 colleges having this autonomous status. Not only that, I would like to add there were certain visionaries who were also aiding the policy makers at that time. And you must have known the name of uh, Dr. Kurendi Sami, three-time vice chancellor. And uh, Dr. Kurendi Sami was instrumental, in fact. Then, suddenly after 1980s, you can see uh, many of the colleges became say, attaining the autonomous status because of uh, the guidance given by Dr. Kodesami. And it is not also uh, an urge from the government to make all the colleges autonomous, but there we have varieties of autonomous colleges. That is true. As uh, Professor Baskaran has said, uh, we have some wonderful colleges, aided colleges having autonomous status, some self-financing colleges having autonomous status, as well as government colleges having autonomous status. But all the autonomous colleges cannot be placed on the same uh, platform and evaluated. Because I have been a member of uh, three important colleges. One, uh, one is the uh, Lady Doak College, Madurai. Uh, you must have heard about this college. The another one is Telemeris College, Chennai, and uh, National College, Trichy. Why I pick up these three colleges, they put autonomy to good use. That is the most important thing. Whereas uh, most of the colleges, when they attain the status of autonomy, it is a kind of a, an ornament, a status symbol, attaining autonomous status. Beyond that status, they don't move. It is a kind of a old wine in a new bottle situation. And substantial changes they do not make, uh, they do not take place in the colleges. Uh, only certain administrative ch uh, ch I mean, uh, changes take place, like uh, the control of examination becomes autonomous. The examinations are conducted by the colleges. And uh, the colleges can make their own curriculum, as well as make the syllabus. But how effectively all these things are done, even the uh, uh, choice-based credit system, uh, I think how effectively it is used in uh, autonomous colleges is a moot question. Because when you go very deep into the issue, uh, sometimes they subvert the autonomy. That is also true. Sometimes uh, they subvert the autonomy because I had been university nominee because uh, UGC uh, mandate is uh, one of the university nominees should be there in the board of studies and other uh, uh, things to assess the autonomous colleges. But when they were discussing about syllabus, they will see how effectively they can cut down the syllabus. How effectively they can, the autonomy is, because if you are affiliated a college, 
a centralized body, uh, a board of studies will be conducted, and it is uh, thrust on you. You have to uh, take it and uh, do the uh, syllabus covering, and uh, it is mandatory. But when you become autonomous, you know, sometimes when you are talking up, they say, these are, uh, you know, very too much, sir. We cannot finish in one semester. Let us cut it down. So ultimately, they also uh, change the uh, projects. Sometimes when you say projects, sir, uh, doing projects are very, very difficult. How can we give projects to all? But projects is a matter of creativity and innovation. That is the reason why projects are introduced. Projects are not introduced for the sake of giving marks to the uh, students. Projects are given both the teacher as well as student. They innovate and create. And thereby, we, we give scope for innovation and creativity there. But unfortunately, they see only as a mechanism to fill up the scorecard or mock sheet. And hence, they immediately it is uh, substituted with uh, a, a coursework rather than with the project. I have put down my foot and said on many occasions, it cannot be done. So as a university representative, uh, I mark my dissent and I'll also report to the curriculum development. But most of the places it is taken care of and that is how it operates. That is also true. So when we uh, uh, look into this question of autonomy, at the same time, I was talking about three colleges. One is this uh, Lady Dog College. The other is Stella Marys and uh, National College uh, Trichy. You know, they are um, something out of ordinary, I must say. Because I was there uh, six years in the academic council of uh, Madurai Lady Dog College. The academic council is conducted in a way, even in universities, it's not conducted. The principal and most of the members are all leading academicians across the state and from the universities, they are there. Each and every board, the papers are discussed, threadbare. It will go on for more than five hours. Very seriously it is done. And uh, whatever changes suggested by the members are immediately incorporated. And then, uh, you know, even at that time, they incorporated the choice-based studies. I'm talking about, uh, say, uh, late 90s. They incorporated an uh, uh, extra credit system into choice-based credit system. In most of the place, places, choice-based credit system is not operating the way in which it should operate. Autonomy is given. You ask uh, your, your, your faculty, uh, what is a credit? If you, if you get an answer, I think the UGC must take a survey in these things, first of all. Please do uh, make a survey and ask uh, each faculty what is a credit. If they give a correct answer, I think you can introduce the choice-based credit system. Most of the people, they do not know what is a credit. I asked the same thing. After becoming a vice chancellor, I went to an affiliated college and said, you are offering choice-based credits. Yes, sir, we are offering. Uh, wh what is the course that you are offering? He said, yeah, he said a uh, name of the course. All right, uh, your principles of management. What, uh, how many credits for this paper? He said, there are 100 credits, sir. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm saying. Then I said, how many hours you teach? So th there is always a correlation between the number of hours we teach and number of credits are there. But uh, many times we are not very serious about it. When there is a soft core and a core subject, the credits are four or five, the number of hours could be equivalent or slightly more. If you are going to teach a two credit course, it cannot have the similarly four uh, teaching hours, need not be four teaching hours. And also the content of the uh, syllabus also need to reflect on the credit of the course. But if you look into the credit of the course, whatever core papers contain, like five units, the same five units will be there for soft core also with two credit course also. So this is again uh, uh, in practice, in practice, whether we are going to implement autonomy in full scale, first of all, the structures of the, our uh, higher education system must be corrected. Corrected and uh, should be made understood to everybody. 
Now, uh, the UGC's mandate and uh, the higher education mandate is not simply uh, publishing papers. You have these, uh, um, say, scores that we have to uh, get for promotions. Now, the only in journals, Scopus Index journals with H index, if you have published, these are taken into consideration. So I asked one of the faculty members, what is your H index? You know, they are not in a position to answer what is it, because they said, uh, you know, in social sciences, there is a problem, in languages, there is a problem, I do agree. And uh, in sciences, most, this uh, man is from sciences, you will really um, wonder, he said, my H index is 2.34, no, H index cannot be like that. It is in round figures. So a, 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 in a science faculty does not know what is H index. And where is the question of asking uh, him to produce? This is I'm talking about the higher level. We are talking about at the colleges. So first of all, the nuances of the intricacies of higher education must be correctly given to the faculty first. First of all, they should understand what is credit system, what is choice-based credit system, how, wh what exactly the credits do, how the credits must be distributed. All these nuances they must understand first. They should understand the system. And also, uh, the question of publication when it comes, they should understand research and innovation. Innovation in curriculum does not mean introducing new courses. There is uh, my good friend Dr. Baskar said about incompatibility of uh, introducing innovative courses. Today the buzzword is introduce innovative courses and uh, innovate your uh, curriculum, innovate your courses. That is true, that is true. That is why we need autonomy. You know another important thing is that we are under British London uh, model of affiliating system that we have inherited rightly or wrongly, we are perpetuating it. And it is a great burden to uh, take example of Usmania University, for instance. There are 700 colleges. And how a university can really monitor all the 700 colleges equally, it's a difficult task. But that is the reason why we need to make each and every unit of this affiliated uh, system an autonomous college so that they can enjoy autonomy, they can innovate their curriculum, they can also innovate their uh, administration and also assessment. All these areas must be covered. It is, it is not a question of merely uh, gaining autonomy and uh, say making certain cosmetic changes in the structures like having a separate uh, examination unit. What we need to do is uh, definitely each autonomous uh, college must also to start with uh, curriculum. When you introduce a curriculum, you kindly see how many you go to the website of each and every college and each every university. If you go to the uh, uh, Western universities also, the curriculum, the board of studies is the backbone. Curriculum de uh, development department is the backbone of an university, like a library for instance. I always say library is the heart and soul of a university. Similarly, curriculum development is the backbone of a university. And uh, you look into, we say research, you look into the bibliography given by each and every uh, course, whether they follow bibliography you see. That I'm, I'm giving you small example. You see whether they follow the real uh, examples of a bibliography entry. Either it is the MLA handbook or Chicago manual or ABS. Whether they follow any of these, there will be none. And also, you see the, the books that are recommended. The books that are recommended are the books I read during my college days. They may be great books. But what is happening today? What is happening today in the field? Whether these are incorporated in the uh, structures of the syllabus, and that is the reason why autonomy is needed. Why autonomy is needed is it is not a bandwagon effect. If a college desires, they can change the, uh, say, the curriculum in their college. If their vibrant teachers are there, their innovative teachers are there, certainly, and I think uh, uh, 
uh, uh, I think it is the vice uh, chairman of a state higher education council here of Andhra Pradesh, Telangana. He was saying that uh, startups, incubators must be part and parcel of our education. Today, again, uh, the MHRD says whether you be in sciences or management or in humanities, ultimately, whether our research and output are related to industry or related to society. The, I, I do agree basic research is the uh, very important component. Without basic research, I think you cannot do wonders in, in the field of research. But at the same time, most of the research are done for the sake of uh, research. There is Pushpa Bhargav, a noted science writer. Pushpa Bhargav, a few years ago, before he passed away, I think he wrote a, an article in the center page of Hindu. He said, last eight, when he wrote that article, last 89 years, India has not produced, after Sir C. V. Raman, a Nobel laureate in the, uh, in the science institutions in India. This is the statement made by Pushpa Bhargav. We have, we have expanded in terms of research. But all Indians who got Nobel Prizes, they went outside the country. They got the Nobel Prizes in the labs that they worked abroad, not inside, only except Sir C. V. Raman. So this is again a question that we have to ask ourselves very seriously. It is not a, a innovation for the sake of innovation. Whether our research things are, uh, uh, say, uh, really help the society as well as industry, and so our structures must change very, uh, it should not be cosmetic, that's what I see, that's what I feel, it should not be cosmetic. Unless and otherwise we make a earnest effort to introduce certain components in, um, say, policy making, I think uh, the question of autonomy, there are, there are uh, certain areas, for instance, the teachers are afraid of autonomy. The teacher unions are afraid of autonomy. You know why? They think a lot of work, more and more work will be thrust upon them. Not responsibility. It, the other word for more work is responsibility. But they don't see it as responsibility. They see it as more work being thrusted on the teachers. But under choice-based credit system, each teacher supposed to have its own assessment, his own or her own assessment, each teacher. So more uh, responsibility is given to each of the faculty under uh, the new system. We must also acknowledge a fact that we are in a changing global scenario. We are in a changing global scenario. No longer we can simply lay back on our existing education system and try to follow it. It is time that we make a departure and uh, make good of the system that we have and make, introduce certain concepts. Only few uh, observations I would like to make regarding these innovative courses that we introduce. It is a catch-22 situation. Why I say this is, when uh, MHRD and UGC say you introduce new courses, but in some times when these courses are introduced, the, when the students after graduation go for jobs, they say these courses are not recognized. And as a result, this question of equivalence comes. The question of equivalence comes. I think uh, this issue must be sorted out. This issue must be sorted out. Otherwise, every university, every college will fall back on the traditional mode of uh, syllabus and they will follow the same thing, to be on the safer side. And similarly, having a uniform syllabus, the state council, I do not want to name the state council of Andhra Pradesh, but generally the duty of a state council is to introduce a uniform syllabus. I think uniformity is antithetical innovation. It does not go along with innovation. If you want innovation, you need variety. You need different thinking. If everybody started thinking on the same lines, if Dalton said autumn cannot be divisible, if everybody say yes, perhaps the world could have been saved. But yet, uh, people thought differently. That is what exactly research is all about. So we, we cannot uh, have uniformity in uh, uh, education system. At lower level, all right. 
But when it comes to higher level, uh, a kind of a new research that is being carried out must be incorporated in the syllabus and the teacher must be given full autonomy under the autonomous colleges and universities to follow. I think there are uh, areas which I think most probably in these uh, ensuing sessions you will have uh, uh, great uh, things to uh, discuss. Uh, I really thank uh, Dr. Sinivas and uh, Professor Gopal Reddy for uh, inviting me to share some of my thoughts. Thank you very much.